Hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another reading vlog where I'm gonna be reading Assassin's Apprentice. So Assassin's Apprentice is the first book in the Farseer trilogy, which is the first trilogy, first series in the realm of the Elderlings, I think, series, which is like huge, has a lot of books. And this is the first one. And this is epic fantasy. And I have read a lot of horror in October, which I love. I absolutely love horror, but I was also missing fantasy because I feel like horror and fantasy might be my favorite genres. And I was definitely missing the fantasy. And also I have been wanting to read this whole world of books for so long. And we are finally here. And I just want to say as well that there are definitely spoilers in this reading vlog for what happens in this book. So having said that, let's just get into the vlog. Okay, so I am on page 125 of Assassin's Apprentice, which is about one third in. And we start following Fitz when he is six years old, but he doesn't remember anything from before that. And when he's six, he is taken to the court and there he lives with a man called Burich or Burich, I'm not sure. And he used to work for chivalry. And chivalry is Fitz's father. And was the heir to the throne because he abdicated of his king-in-waiting status. And while Fitz is living with Burrich, Burrich learned that Fitz can sort of telepathically communicate with animals, which is called having the wit. And Burrich tells him to not use that and also to not let anyone know that he can use it. And then one day, while he is there at court, the king finds him. And basically, Fitz vows to be loyal to the king. And the king says that he will basically find a way to make Fitz be useful to him. And then he starts living there with the fancy people, which is no longer with Burrich. And Fitz does not enjoy that one bit. And then one night, a man wakes him up, like in the middle of the night, and that man is called Shade. And he tells Fitz that he is going to be teaching him basically how to be an assassin. And that is, like the king requested that, but no one else is supposed to know that he is being trained to be an assassin. And some years pass with Fitz being trained, with Shade giving him various tasks for him to do. And then one day he gives him a task that is to steal something from the king. But Fitz had vowed to be loyal to the king, and so he did not feel comfortable breaking that promise and stealing something from the king, even if it was just like a test, a task that didn't matter. And so he told Shay that like he couldn't do that. And like at first, and even like a good chunk of this conversation, I was thinking that, you know, this has to be a test to see that if he would actually be loyal to the king or if he would steal from him if someone asked but like he took it so far that like Shade said that he couldn't teach Fitz anymore if he wouldn't basically obey to him. And yeah, he just, you know, said, I can't teach you anymore, goodbye. And that was that for a while. And so I was very confused. But then one day the king talked to Fitz and told him that it was a test. That was the king's idea and not Shade's. And yeah, that happened. And then Fitz started having the lessons with Shade again. And after they start having the lessons again, Fitz learns that his father has died and Shade thinks that it was someone from court that ordered his death, but he isn't exactly sure who, like he has his suspicions, but he isn't sure. And then Fitz, he's given his first like real assignment and basically he has to accompany Verity, who is the new heir, to the throne and they have to go to see a lord who was supposed to be like using watchtowers to you know protect them but isn't really doing his job and so they have to go there and Fitz needs to figure out if he's just you know failing because he sucks or if he is actually like 
betraying the king. And if he is betraying the king, he is supposed to kill that guy. And so that is where I'm at. And it is a bit slower than I would like it to be, but I was already expecting the book to be this way. And as usual, starting a new fantasy world is a bit overwhelming. I am still trying to figure out like who everyone is, what their positions are, who the enemies are, because the ones who are attacking, I think they are called the red ships. And so I'm also still trying to figure out who those people are, but I'm, I am enjoying it. And I actually really like Fitz and I also really relate to him because he's kind of like introverted, doesn't want to really be around a lot of people, having to talk to a lot of people. He wants to just, you know, be in the background in his own space. And I relate to that on a deep level. And so I am really liking him. And I mean, the, his training is fun, but like I said, it's also a bit slow, but I am expecting more things to come. So I'm not like, I am really enjoying it. I'm really liking it as I start to a new series, a new world. I am having a lot of fun and I have great expectations and I will update again when I read another third. Okay, so I am on page 260 of Assassin's Apprentice and in this second third of the book everyone gets to Lord Kelver, Kelvar's house, the guy that is not doing his job with the watchtowers properly and Fitz basically realizes that he is just way too preoccupied with his new wife and like giving her gifts and whatever to do his job like he's not focusing on his job and so Fitz doesn't think that you know he's gonna have to kill him because he's not actually betraying his king like purposefully he's just neglecting his job because he's more worried about his wife and so one night Fitz is in the kitchen of like Lord Kilver's house and Lord Kelver's wife goes down into the kitchen with her dog who is like choking on something and then Fitz manages to save the dog and she tells him that he can ask for anything he wants like as a reward, as payment, whatever. And he basically tells her to tell her husband to just do his goddamn job properly basically. And that is that because then Shade gets there and he tells Fitz that they have other business to attend to that is actually more urgent. And so the place that they have to go is a place called Forge and it's where the red ships have attacked and the red ships have taken hostages and they told the people from the Forge that if they paid them, they would kill the hostages and if they didn't, they would release them, which didn't make any sense to anybody, me included. And then when Fitz and Shade get there, they realize that they're too late because the hostages have been released, but they are like the best word I can use to describe is sort of like zombified because they are alive, but they're not, and they're not really human either anymore. And Fitz then realizes that he has always been, I mean, he realizes, we realize, whatever, that he's always been able to feel, sense people like, the people around them before they appear he could sense that they were there and he can't sense anything for those people so they're not even like actually alive anymore they're not human they're we don't know what they are really and when shade realizes that fitz has this ability he says that he needs to be taught the skill which is the name of that ability and so when they get back to the courts he, Fitz, starts being taught the skill by a guy called Galen, who fucking sucks. He is horrible and he makes all of their lives miserable, like all of the people who are learning the skill, he makes their lives miserable. He is absolutely a horrible person and one in one of the classes, he's like trying to reach out to them using the skill and then he and Fitz start having like sort of a mental battle 
and then Galen also starts hitting him like physically and then just like left him there almost dead and he thinks that Galen did that because he didn't have enough like self-discipline with the skill and then Burridge who is the guy like who took care of Fitz first he kicks Galen's ass which was really satisfying by the way with Stan Burridge and then told Fitz to go back to the classes and so Fitz does go back and then Galen after a while tells them that they're all gonna be tested for the skill to learn if they are worthy or if they're just gonna be discarded and that is where we ended so I'm guessing the next chapter I read is gonna be like the challenge and I still absolutely love Fitz I love the writing but I feel like around halfway through the book I started losing interest and I don't know if it's because we got like so many detailed descriptions of Fitz like lessons and there was nothing else happening and it just became like way too slow for me. I don't know if it's why or not, but I just, I kind of lost interest a little bit. But that is like one thing I really love and I haven't really talked about because I don't know how to insert their character in the story because I don't know how exactly they are inserted in the story because like the character is very mysterious, very intriguing and that is the fool who is the king's fool and no one really knows anything about them like people don't know the fool's age, where they came from, their gender, their name, like nothing there is nothing known about the fool but I love them and Fitz is one of the few people who actually talks to the fool and the fool can kind of read I'm guessing can kind of read Fitz's thoughts because sometimes they know what Fitz is thinking and like reply to what Fitz is thinking. And people also say that the fool can predict the future, like know things that are gonna happen. And I am very intrigued. And another thing that I'm very intrigued about is like what is happening to the people from the forge, like in the others who have been attacked by the red ships, like what is happening to them? Like what are people, like what are they doing to them? What is exactly that thing that they become. I am very interested about that as well. So like I said, like I am still enjoying it. I still love Fitz. I'm still interested in the overall plot of the story, but I think it's just a little bit too slow for me right now. And there are some parts of it that I was just kind of bored, but overall I'm still enjoying it. And I will finish it and let you know what I think about it. Okay, so I have finished Assassin's Apprentice and while Fitz is out for his challenge of the skill, which Galen never meant to actually give him any chance to succeed at, he senses that Burridge and his dog, Fitz's dog I mean, are being both attacked back home and so Fitz hurries back home which takes a long time and he has to fight some of those they call them forge because it happened at the forge first, but like those zombified people, he has to fight some of them and then he eventually makes his way back and he finds that the dog died and Burridge, he's alive, but like he is pretty badly hurt. And after some time, Fitz is given another task and basically Verdi, so his uncle and the heir to the throne is gonna get married but he can't leave because he is using the skill to basically fight and protect the kingdom and so he can't leave right now to go get married and so Regal who is Verdi's younger brother half brother is the one who's gonna go in his place to take care of everything basically and Fitz is supposed to go with Regal and he is supposed to kill Verity's bride's brother. And when they get there, Regal actually tells Verity's bride that Fitz is there to kill her brother. And then she talks to Fitz and he realizes that, like, what would you do if you knew that someone went to your home to murder your brother? And he realizes that if he was his king, they would kill 
the assassin. And so he realizes that he himself has been poisoned and he uses something that the fool gave him back home if he ever was poisoned. And so he uses that and he actually manages to be okay. And he actually goes talk to the guy who he was supposed to kill. And he tells him like what he was supposed to do, like he was supposed to kill him and shows him the poison even. And then they share some wine. And then Fitz realizes that the wine is poisoned because Regal didn't trust him to complete his task. So Regal poisoned the wine that they both drank. But the other guy actually drank more than Fitz, so he dies. And Fitz doesn't die, but he isn't feeling great either because he was just poisoned. And while Fitz is like basically dying, he manages to contact Verity through the skill and tell him like what is going on. And also that Galen cannot be trusted because Galen is trying to like drain Verity through the skill. So he manages to like warn Verity, but then Regal tries to kill Fitz, then his dog, I mean, not his dog, like it used to be his dog when he was younger, but then Burridge gave him to like that guy that he was supposed to kill now. The dog saves Fitz and then Burridge gets there because he was able to hear the dog and Fitz like, you heard the howling? And Burridge like, no, that's not what I mean. So Burridge also has the wit, like that thing that Fitz has that can communicate with animals and Burridge hates him telling him not to use it, like he also has that, I guess. And then there were some more like confrontations, fights, which are honestly all amazing. But basically Galen is dead, which we love to see. Regal is put on a shorter leash and Fitz is not outed in court as an assassin, so things kind of turned out okay. And honestly, these last chapters were incredible. And let's just go into my final thoughts. So obviously starting off with Fitz, because he's the main character, he's the one we are always following. And I really, really liked him. I, like I said, I actually related to him a lot and I really liked his personality. I really enjoyed following him. Overall, like I said, there were some parts that I was bored, but it was not because of Fitz himself. I always really liked him. And there were other characters that I really liked as well, like Burridge and Verdi and Shade, and characters that I hated, like Regal and Galen. But I mean, I think it, the point was to hate them. So it definitely worked. And then there was the Fool, who I am still really intrigued about. And I really want to learn more about the Fool in the next book because they are a very interesting, intriguing, mysterious character. And in terms of the plot, I was always like really invested in their overall plot. And again, like I said, there were some times there in the middle where I was kind of bored, like when we were just following Fitz's lessons in the skill because there wasn't really a lot happening. So I was kind of bored, but like the overall plot, I am interested. Oh, I was like always interested. I just wanted it to move faster along, which leads us to pacing. So like I said, in the first third, I was like, it was slow, but we were learning a lot about the world and about the characters. And so I didn't really mind that much the slower pacing. So like in the first third of the book, I was thinking like solid four stars. But then in the second third, it became a lot, lot slower. And I kind of lost interest a little bit. So I was thinking like, okay, this is now probably a three stars. But then in this last third, things like started heating up again, especially in the last chapters, which were amazing. So the rating I'm gonna give it is actually 3.5 stars, but like a really solid 3.5 stars. And I think this was like a really good introduction to the series, in my opinion, because it left me with a lot of questions that I want answered. So like, I really want to read the next books to know what happened because I want to learn everything about this world. I'm very interested. I'm already, like I said, invested in like the overall plot that I think is gonna be the overall plot because I don't know, but I'm assuming. And yeah, I had a good time in this book. Definitely interested to continue on with this trilogy and then the series, hopefully. And yeah, like I said, a very solid 3.5 stars. And so that is everything for this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a like and subscribe and I will talk to you next time. Bye.